Welcome, my friend, to another Technical Tuesday, and today you're going to learn how to make a roux, the very first thing my father taught me how to make at about six years old. So I can't wait to show you. A roux is a basic thickening agent used in a wide variety of cooking, uh, particularly South Louisiana. The southern states use it a lot, including my home state of Arkansas. So when we go around the corner, we're going to make this. So I'll see you then. Welcome back, my friend, to making a roux. So let's, let me show you what I've got going here. I've got a pan um, on the stove. This is a uh, fry pan uh, on the stove. Uh, I've got it at medium heat. This is an induction burner, and this is stainless steel. And the other things I have is equal parts by weight. Uh, this is whole unsalted butter. Sorry about bumping you. Whole unsalted butter and all-purpose flour. All right, now you don't have to use butter. I like butter because it's very versatile. Uh, it'll extend across a lot of different uh, cuisines and dishes. And in a, I always keep this, by the way, some roux made up in my fridge or my freezer. I can just go in and grab what I need when I need it. So if you make this, I make more than what I'm doing here. This is 100 grams, uh, equal parts by weight, 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of AP flour. And, uh, but please, once you learn how to do this, I'd start with smaller quantities until you master the technique. Well, you're not going to master. I haven't even mastered the freaking technique until you get very competent at it, let's say. Um, mastery takes a long time, but competency can happen quickly. That just takes repeated practice. So start with small amounts. If you burn a batch, you haven't wasted a lot of money and a little bit of time. You throw it out, you start over. That's how you learn. The one thing about the culinary business, learning how to cook at home, whether it's professionally or not, but you at home, always failing forward. I can't tell you how many dishes I've totally failed at and keep trying and keep trying until I get it perfected. And then people say, oh, wow, that's delicious. You must be like magic or something. And I just let them believe I am. But the fact is, is I've just failed enough to uh, move forward in that. Don't. Don't make the same mistake twice. Get up and try it again. Get up, try it again. Get up, try it again. And roux is no different. A lot of people are intimidated by roux, and that's why a lot of people don't know. But this is the first thing my father taught me how to cook when I was six years old. All right, we're getting some heat in the pan. I'm going to let a little bit more because uh, if, I leave, if I start now and put the butter in there, uh, there's a chance that before it's all melted, some of it could be brown, turned into brown butter. Nothing wrong with brown butter. We just want it, don't want brown butter in our roux today. By, by the way, you want to try some brown butter. I'll do a technical Tuesday video on brown butter. Brown butter chocolate chip cookies. Woo-wee! Knock your socks off, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So we're, uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to make a roux. And I'm going to carry this roux through the various stages. Uh, if Many of you might remember Emerald Gossi, one of the early Food Network stars. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he, he, guy cracks me up. I hope to meet him someday. Uh, guy is really an inspiration. Uh, just as a little aside, I used to, uh, I was in another career for 33 years. Information, information, okay, it's easy for you to say. Information technology on the software and database side. And for 25 of those years, literally, I said, if I had to do it over again, I'd be a chef and I'd be Emerald. And he'd be me, but then he said no. Okay, there we go. Laugh later. All right, so Emerald did a video, uh, a, a show, Food Network show, or part of another show, where he talked about the different stages of roux. <laughs> and he said, this is a one-beer roux. And, you know, it was that color. Then he said, this color is a two-beer roux. And this color is a three-beer roux. Well, I don't recommend you drink an alcohol while you cook at all. Don't do it. And you don't have to time it by the amount of time it takes to drink a beer. Uh, you just look at the color and how it smells. You, you'll see me wafting up the uh, aroma because it'll develop a nice, rich, nutty flavor. Okay, now the pan's uh, pretty close. I'm going to dump my butter in there. Now I want that to completely melt, okay? And again, I'm not looking to burn this. This is on a medium heat. And I'm going to turn it up to a medium high to start with. Now, listen, kids, here's the deal. Until you get good at this, stay low and slow. You, it'll be there for a long time. 
but you will learn the technique. As you become more competent in doing it, uh, you can turn the temperature up with confidence and be able to actually uh, cook this faster. Uh, I, that was not moving along nearly as quickly as I wanted, so I want that butter melted. And it all needs to be melted. Don't eat, not even that little bit. Just make sure I'm putting it down, push, putting it down. <laughs> Good grief, it's not rover. All right, so now I've got it all melted. I'm going to dump it in my AP flour. Get it off my fingers. 100 grams of each. Now I'm going to stir quickly, and I want to quickly incorporate the flour and the butter together. And uh, we want to make a paste out of this. It needs to be the consistency of a loose peanut butter, if that makes sense. In fact, somewhere along the way, we're going to get to a peanut butter color. So right now, it's harder to differentiate the color when you use butter because the yellow in the butter is going to color it. If this were a neutral oil, this would be a white roux right now. Not even blonde, it would be white. Uh, you would cook it for a couple minutes to cook the raw out of the flour and uh, set it aside. And that is what the French use for bechamel because in their bechamel, they want no color on their roux. They want their bechamel to be completely white. Now, uh, if this were incorporated into a bechamel, for example, right now, it would, the yellowish from the brown would actually be totally, you know, knocked back. What's the right word? Anyway, it wouldn't be as yellow as the butter would indicate. It would just mix in and still be white. So you could use a butter roux. If you use a neutral oil, then you're going to get uh, a very white root. The next stage is what I call a blonde. Man, I just keep bumping you guys. Sorry about that. Hope I'm not making you dizzy. A blonde roux or a light tan roux is what I go for when I make uh, milk gravy. Now, in the South, we love our biscuits and gravy. Let me tell you, this is also would be the same gravy we would use on a chicken fried steak or a uh, chicken fried uh, chicken, if that makes sense. Uh, I'll do that dish sometime for you, and I'll show you what a chicken fried chicken looks like. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm going to just cook this down. Now, here's the thing. This is a critical, critical thing, and this is where people get intimidated. Do not walk away. I can't tell you the number of times where I've walked away to grab something real quick and then someone grabbed me, want to start talking, the doorbell rings and I answer it. And then, you know, the neighbor wants to talk about his new lawnmower. And then next thing you know, I've got to start over on my roof because I burned it. And the reason I'm moving it around is uh, the more uh, it stays in one place, the greater the chance that it could actually scorch. And uh, as one of my culinary instructors, Chef Rogers, hey chef, uh, actually said to me and to the class, uh, there ain't no such thing as a little burnt. <laughs> and that's a fact. Now you can see here, this has actually gone from blonde to a light tan color. Uh, this would be a good place to stop if you're making a milk gravy. But we're going to continue because I want you to see the change in color uh, as we go. Now, why am I using a, uh, a heat resistant spatula? By the way, these things will go up to about 450 degrees. Uh, they're in commercial kitchens everywhere uh, and absolutely recommend them. Uh, if you get something at Walmart or some of those other big box stores uh, and it doesn't say it's heat resistant, you're going to end up with melted spatula in your roux or whatever else you're using. This will handle the heat. Now, a lot of people recommend using a wooden spoon. Now, that's okay. I like using a wooden spoon if I have a flat one. That's a flat shape, got a flat edge on it so I can scrape and I want to scrape all of that. A rounded tip only makes a little bit of a, a movement, like something like that. And it doesn't move the product uh, quite as well as this does. And then a whisk is absolutely useless to prevent scorching. Now, you're probably noticing here the color changing even darker. Okay. Now, for the purpose, I see some smoke coming off. I'm going to turn this down to medium. Oh, man. That nutty smell. Woo! Now I've got to, now that it uh, is darkening, I've got to be very diligent about moving it around the pan. You notice also it's loosened up. It's not that tight paste anymore. Uh, and that's okay. 
Now, so I am going to do my best. I may have an epic fail, but I'm going to do my best to take this down to a chocolate roux, uh, which is uh, where you're going to, you know, start thinking about making gumbo. Uh, for most purposes, for most gravies, we've already uh, darkened. Now, if you had, uh, if you were going to use this roux in like a, a, a pot roast and you wanted to uh, thicken up the juices and the, and the liquids and the broth around it, the the uh, beef stock this would be a good color uh, it's not you're not going to it's not going to change the color of the juices um, it, but also remember uh, another key fact the more roux is cooked the less the thickening power so when you get down to a gumbo roux that really is mostly for flavor now most gumbos that don't have to be that thick but my mentor uh, taught me that he always has two roux. He makes a dark roux for the color and the flavor in the gumbo, and he makes a regular, you know, like a blonde or tan roux uh, for uh, thickening. So he actually has two on hand. You notice now we're at the peanut butter color stage. See that? Isn't that pretty? Oh, it smells. If you had smell of vision, my goodness, I need to invent that. Somebody. Give me a week off and let me invent Smell-O-Vision because, man, this stuff is amazing. So we're just going to continue darkening this. Now, remember, at any stage we've already gone through, you can stop. You know, you, you really can. And most people will stop at, like I said, the blonde or the tan. So don't feel like you have to do this. But this is very good practice on how to control the roux, learn how to keep it moving, without scorching, very important. Oh my goodness, you know, almost, I'm not, I'm not telling my age, but almost six decades later, I still enjoy making roux as much as I did the first time my daddy taught me how to make it. That little bitty house, 1200 square foot house that I thought was a mansion in my mind and uh, it isn't. The kitchen was teeny tiny. After my mother died uh, back in 2014, I drove by that house and just stopped on the side of the road. The oh, neighborhood still looks the same. Well, not true. There was a tree. There's an intersection where three street went to, no, four streets came together, but it wasn't a traditional, we didn't have curbs in this neighborhood. It was just blacktop, then grass, maybe a small little ditch to drain water, rainwater off. But uh, where the four streets came together, it was actually a large area. It wasn't the four corners, a very large area. And there was a tree that grew in the middle of that. They've since cut that tree down. And that's the only thing different about that neighborhood. All those houses are there. They have added a couple of houses at different vacant lots along the, uh, along the way. Anyway, uh, so I chased a uh, squirrel. Sorry about that. I uh, sat outside the house and was just looking at it. Then I realized the owner of the house was in the backyard, which looked the same. Chain link fence. It had the, the little metal buildings my dad bought from Sears and had built. And I, quote unquote, helped him. I, in other words, I picked up uh, materials and tools and handed it to him. Uh, those were still there. The little tree house I built was not there. Uh, but at, for all intents and purposes... Uh, this house was, the yard was identical. Now, the house had been changed a little bit. They had the, the carport, it had a single car carport, and that had been enclosed and made into a den. Anyway, the guy was standing in the backyard, and I figured, well, I better get out and tell him what I'm doing before he calls the police. And uh, so I went over, and sure enough, he, uh, very gracious, I told him, you know, I'd lived there for a dozen years through uh, probably most of my, young childhood until i got into early late junior high and high school till and when we moved um they built another house so anyway he was gracious enough to let me into that house that once seemed like a mansion to me and i'm going to turn the fire back up because it has it's annoying me it's going so slow uh but you do it slow okay anyway he graciously allowed me in and this place was tiny oh my gosh the front, everything was tiny. Well, it was tiny then. I just was too young to know the difference. And that kitchen that um, he taught me to make roux in, 
that kitchen where my mother taught me how to can. And uh, if you watch my Mother's Day video uh, somewhere up here, uh, that's the three cookies that she she made with me as a tot uh, were, were made in that kitchen. And it was uh, it was very reminiscent, of course, a very sad time in my life. Still sad my mother's gone, but time heals a little bit. But right then it was still pretty raw and brought back a lot of mem lot of good memories. A lot of good memories in that house. Anyway, that's where I learned to make roux. And um, I really enjoyed being able to visit there again. Looked at my old bedroom. Oh my gosh! And there was only one bathroom in the in the whole house. And I want to say, if you if you took this this whole counter that I'm working on right now, cut it in half and spun it around to fit together, that bathroom was smaller than that square footage right there. It was literally was a single bath, had a single sink, a tub with a shower head, and uh, see a little smoke coming off. So now I can tell maybe I was a little ambitious and getting that heat up I don't, it's not burning but i don't want it to this smoke indicates you know we could if i wasn't moving it we'd be burning in a second this is why you can't walk away anyway uh, it was all tiny 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 my parents master bedroom what most people would not even call it that today it's just not even that big and the two uh kid bedrooms were tiny as well we had a dog. My, my parents uh, somehow got interested in a breed called Skipper Key. They were originally, they're called a Skipper Key because they were the, the uh, ship's cap, the dog of the ship's captain. And they were a very cute dog. Uh, and we had one. There was a cartoon that was out during the day called uh, Precious Pup. And so this dog was officially named Precious Pup, full bleeds full breed skipper key we just called him precious for short look how the color's changing this is uh, uh, even now i turn the heat down this smoke is still starting to build on that but we're getting very very close and i'm going to turn it down back down to a medium anyway this dog named pressure but this dog was honorary i mean this dog i was seriously honorary and uh, so in the backyard on a saturday my dad was doing some work in the backyard been uh, watering the plants. We probably had a hot summer going on. And I mean, when I say honorary, this dog was honorary. Uh, so, but let me get to the other story first. The, um, see that color changing? How beautiful that is? Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. So I never wanted to get up. Now I was always, I've always been an early riser. Uh, but this, because I was an early riser, doesn't mean I was easy to get up as a kid. So they would let Precious in from the, uh, outside and he would run to my room and jump on me and just start trying to lick my face clean and by golly I was awake then but the other story I was going to tell about precious pup the skipper key was one Saturday my dad's doing yard work yard work and watering things he had the water hose in his hand where he'd been watering and the uh, I think it was an uncle to our next door neighbor our next door neighbor would eventually become a house builder and a state senator before he prematurely died in his 40s of a heart attack. But he built two of my the later houses after this one for my parents. Anyway, I think a relative of his, an uncle, I think, came by and was visiting with my dad. And they were both leaning uh, on the opposite sides of the chain link fence having a conversation. Well, I had done something with the water. My hands were wet and dripping a little water. And I went over to Presh, uh, Pet Precious. And some water dripped in his face, and the dog bit me on the hand. Well, my dad wasn't too happy about that. And I, so, <laughs> listen. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I was bit. and I, don't, I think I probably cried as a kid. Anyway, enough of that pontification. Look at this. Now, this is not nonsense right here. Look at the color on that. That is a dark peanut butter. It's really starting to get to a, a chocolate stage. And um, we'll bump the heat just slightly. Wow, this is looking fabulous. So anyway, this is how you make a roux. Take it as far as you need for whatever you're using it for. Like I said, most time, unless you're doing a gumbo or something that needs a lot of that flavor and color, 
you're not going to go this far. In fact, this is not even the gumbo stage yet. Uh, I have a lot of friends from South Louisiana, a lot. I really do. I'm not a LSU fan. I'm a Razorback fan. In fact, I'm named after a Razorback. Uh, All-American one at that, played professional ball. I got his name, but not his ability. Anyway, uh, a lot of friends in South Louisiana, they would laugh at this if I called this a gumbo roux. In fact, I've made a very, very, very dark chocolate roux, and I've had, I've had them look at me and go, that's not dark enough. I mean, what the crap? So here we go. It is getting there. So I am going to, I'm not going to go walk away, but I'm going to bring a, something I need really close. And I'm going to stir quickly, make sure that I'm not even close to scorching. I want to get everything moved right now. I, I spent a few seconds away from it. And uh, even in that little bit of time, especially the darker it gets, the, uh, the easier it is for it to scorch. So we're going to cook this thing a little bit longer. And then we're going to put it in a container and store it. Look at that beautiful color. Now, a true Cajun would not do this. Uh, he's, this takes too long. A true Cajun would get his pan scorching hot, put in the oil, and it would start smoking almost immediately. Then he would dump the flour in and quickly stir it, probably with a whisk, and then just step, I mean, st literally step back. And it would become very dark very fast, within minutes. Uh, if you read, my mentor was uh, mentored by the late uh, chef Paul Prudhomme. And if you read his book, uh, Louisiana Kitchen, he talks about, you know, cooking the roux in minutes. Now, this has taken several to uh, doing this video, but I want you to learn low and slow before you try to do it. Have I done it the other way? Yes, I have. And yes, it works. And I haven't done it enough, though, to be competent at it. I've done it enough to be lucky a couple of times and unlucky once or twice as well. And so I'm not competent yet. And it's, so it still makes me a little bit nervous. But I want you to learn how to do it in a way that you are not intimidated, not afraid. And then as you progress in your competency level, you can uh, start adapting some of those other techniques uh, as you feel more comfortable with the process. So this is not about teaching you how to make a dark, dark roux the way a Cajun or a Creole chef or cook would do. This is how, uh, this is how you would do it to learn to start out. Can you see the change in that color though? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. There's parts of cooking that still, even though I've seen them dozens, if not hundreds of times, participated in doing things, they still amaze me, you know? Another one is uh, making a lemon curd or lemon icebox pie and watching, you know, the uh, lemon juice curdle the eggs, egg yolks. I mean, it just blows my stinking mind. It's science, man. It's science. So there is a part of science to cooking. If you're baking, man, it's all science. You've got to, uh, that's why baking measurements are have to be precise. When we're doing savory cooking or culinary cooking, uh, not so much. You don't have to be uh, so precise. A lot of things are taste. Now, I'm really, I'm going to bump this up a little bit more. We're going to go back to what scared me earlier. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. And so now we're going to finish this off as quickly as possible because I have talked a lot of nonsense for too long. I thank you for hanging around, though. I really do. Now, if you like this process or you want or you try this process or you're thinking about, let me know in the comments, please. And if you subscribe to the notion that... Um, Making a roux is something you want to learn. Let me know that too. And if you want some more advanced or more videos on a roux making, then I'm happy to do that. You see the smoke coming off? Now we have to really stir. If I quit bumping you, dad, gum it. Maybe I should take this silly hat off.
Look at this. Now, rue is one of the most uh, basic of thickeners. Uh, the Americans didn't invent it. It was invented years ago. Uh, most people give the French and Western cooking, French cooking, credit for that. If they didn't create it, they at least codified the process. The French love to codify things. What does that mean? It means to write things down in directions and descriptions and step by step. Very big on that. Oscoffier's biggest contribution to the culinary world was that he wrote crap down. And by the way, just an aside, I had a multimillionaire businessman say this repeatedly um, to me and others. The dullest pencil is better than the sharpest mind. Take notes. I guarantee you. I had a mind at one time. I'm, this is no exaggeration, not bragging. It was true. My memory, I could remember... Uh, tonal inflections of a conversation 20 years later. Well, I'm a little older now, and I have, uh, unfortunately, have dementia on both sides of my family. And so I'm starting to notice some short-term memory loss. Uh, I now write stuff down. Now, you see, look what's happening. See that color? How much darker it is? See that smoke? Now, I've got to be very diligent, constantly moving this around. Oh, my goodness, look at that. That is incredible. Woo-wee! Boy, it's really coming off now. Now, it's gone from nutty to uh, to a, not a scorched or burnt smell, but uh, if I wasn't careful, in fact, I want to turn that down and be a little more careful, but that got us where we needed to be pretty quickly. Um, but again, you see why you, you walk away at this stage, I mean, for two seconds, go to the fridge and come back, burnt. Don't do it. You know, this is what intimidates people the most is they, they feel trapped here or they, you know, they're so afraid they're going to, listen, don't have fear. Have courage to try. The food knows and smells fear. Well, not really, but you get the metaphor. I hope so. And, uh, whoo, look at that. My, 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 my. Okay, now, we are very, very close to a dark roux, okay? I mean, to a chocolate roux. And this literally will not take more than a second or two. I mean, a minute, you know, 60 seconds or so. But I, I've got to be diligent, diligent, diligent. Now, what am I going to do after this? First thing I'm going to do is going to take it off the heat. But because of the residual heat in the pan and the heat in the roux itself, which is called carryover heat, this will continue to cook. So I can't stop stirring it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, on top of where we are right now because that's where the uh, the camera is. I'm going to pull over the, now. This and this is an induction cooktop, so the the top itself is not hot except the spot where we are is very hot because of the heat of the pan. The pan is transmitting the heat to the cooktop, not the other way around. An induction uses a magnet to induce the cells, uh, the cells, the molecule, whatever they are in the steel, in the carbon-based metal, to collide with each other, move around and collide, and that friction produces the heat. All right, so that's how that works. So I'm going to slide this tray over the top, and I'm going to put a deli tainer on it, because if I put the deli tainer right now on top of this induction top, the pan has made it so hot it would probably melt the bottom of the, the container, and I don't want that. So I'm going to slide that over, quickly uh, put that in the deli tainer to stop the cooking from the heat of the pan. And then I'm going to set that deli tainer on a bowl of ice, an ice bath, which is just another way of saying a bowl with ice and water in it. 50% ice, 50% water, no more water than that, could be less. And then, uh, and that'll help it cool down, stop the cooking process. And it'll also help the deli tainer to uh, hold that heat now, or to uh, take the heat without damage. Now, a deli tainer can take a lot of heat, okay? I've picked up a lot of hot soups from restaurants in deli tainers. So they do handle a lot of heat. Look at the color. Okay, you see that? My goodness, that's a chocolate roux. All right, so at this point, I am going to call it good. I'm going to turn the fire off, but I'm going to continue to stir it uh, for a minute. It'll gain some additional color, meaning it'll get darker chocolate. And uh, we'll be able to uh, take this 
uh, and very quickly transfer it to that deli tainer. So I'm going to move it to one side, the side I'm going to pour from. Okay. Then I'm going to quickly move this over. Now in, a, in home, you probably would have this set up, but for the camera purposes, I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Now we're going to pour that in quickly. Now at home, I would probably have it already sitting on the ice bath and just uh, pour it right over that. But again, I'm going to do it this way for right now. Now I'm going to grab the ice bath. This, the ice bath, the uh, bowl is made of stainless steel. And if the induction burner was on, it would actually heat up the bowl like it would any kind of metal uh, stove, uh, cook, cooking uh, vessel. But now I've got it in the ice bath. And uh, I put it in the uh, container we had the butter in. That little extra butter is not going to hurt it at all. Not going to change any of the characteristics. And this way it protects the deli tainer, but more importantly, it cools this down uh, for storage. Now, again, use these small amounts when you're starting to learn. Graduate to larger and larger amounts for whatever purpose you're using. And always make extra when you make and keep the rest in the uh, refrigerator. If it's been longer than a few weeks, then you can move it to the freezer. Make sure you label and date it and tell you how many times even at home I've actually uh, thought, oh, I'll remember what that is, and then go back a month later and go, what the crap is that? <laughs> Unfortunately, that is a truth. All right. There you go, my friend. That's making a roux. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make additional videos like this one or you want me to elaborate more on this one. Uh, but this is the basics of making a roux, and I'm so excited to share that with you. Uh, one of the first things I learned, the very first thing I actually learned to cook. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you for being with me on Technical Tuesday. And just remember this, a day in the kitchen beats a day of working any day. We'll see you next time on the Chef Lance Show.